With the popularity of people working part and even full time from their RVs, we revisit Steve and Bonnie Gibbons, who successfully ran their business while logging over 24,000 miles a year as full timers, way before it became the popular lifestyle it is today. Then, a viewer sent in this story about a simple LP heating system that he and his family used to keep warm during those cool mornings and evenings when out camping. Also, if you think the RV industry is a male-dominated industry, better start thinking again. Things have been changing quickly thanks to the RV Women's Alliance, as you will learn in this story. Of course, pets love RVing too. But if you have an older pet, there are certain things you should be aware of, as Dr. Fitz discusses on today's Pause On Board. These stories and more on this episode of RVing Today. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Forest River. Follow the river. I'm sure many of you have seen their travel and adventure articles on our website. And this week, we introduce you to Steve and Bonnie Gibbons, full-time business people and full-time RVers. So how do they manage to combine their love of RVing, kayaking, and travel into a dream lifestyle? Bonnie and I met about 13 years ago, and we started Scapoos Bay Kayaking about 12 years ago. We happened to come into this area to go kayaking into the beautiful bay, recognized that we really liked it, and thought it would be a perfect place to open up a kayaking shop. Um, so we found the people that had this building available for rent. Uh, contacted them and within a month or so had rented the building, went out and bought some kayaks and away we went. And we found out that the kayaking rental was such a good business that we quit our other jobs and we've been doing it practically every day for the last 12 years. As Steve and Bonnie found out, that was only the beginning. What happened with us is when we first rented our first six boats, the customers that rented came in and said, boy, we really like those boats. Do you sell them? And I said, well, I don't today, but I will tomorrow. And what we did is we contacted the manufacturers of the boats that we were renting and became dealers for them. And you can't really just sell a kayak, you also have to have a paddle and a life jacket. And one thing led to the other where it almost not only taught us but forced us into getting into the kayaking business greater and greater and greater because of the demand for having kayaks. We are a full service kayak shop. We do sales, rentals, instruction, tours, and just about anything else people want and desire. Uh, we also do stand-up paddle boards. Mm -hmm. We originally, about six or seven years ago, just started traveling south in the winter because we closed the kayak shop down. And finally we decided we needed and wanted to buy some sort of RV to travel in. Um, you know, so we could camp out and, and stay in remote places. And we decided on the Airstream because we've always been kind of old school and liked the Airstream, the way they looked, and also the fact that they are probably one of the best uh, RVs to travel in. Um, great on mileage, easy to haul, they're just awesome. I think we've always been outdoor people and mm -hmm. tenters originally and through the kayaking we'd throw kayaks on our truck and go camping somewhere and paddle as well but the convenience of being able to have a nice RV in tow instead of necessarily tenting anymore certainly made us feel a little bit better and we found ourselves traveling more and more that way with the comforts of the Airstream as well. We were wondering, what led Steve and Bonnie to choose an Airstream as their first trailer? Uh, we decided uh, get what we wanted. We wanted to select and not settle, so we purchased the Airstream first. Mm -hmm. And from then on, uh, we've owned three Airstreams uh, since the first one. Originally, we purchased a 23-footer and traveled around in it for a winter and decided that uh, we needed something a little larger. We got five-foot itis and uh, so we purchased a 28-footer that we now live in. We've lived in it for three years. Uh, we're full-timers. Um, in the summer, we stay here at the kayak shop, 
and then come September we'll leave and travel to all the national parks and national monuments throughout the southwest New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, California. We've been averaging about uh, 25 to 30,000 miles each year in our Airstream traveling. We left the 1st of October of last year and just came back to the kayak shop to help get it up and running again for the summer and we had done 27,000 miles. So, and all in the Airstream. And out of that probably, I would say maybe 200 miles was on expressways. The rest was all back roads, country roads. My wife is the, uh, the map reader, navigator. I'm the driver and with the help of a GPS, we found some of the most remote, most beautiful places, met the most wonderful people. And she's very good at being able to find old ghost towns or cliff dwellings or off the road kind of places that are fun to travel to. With being on the road for half the year, just how do you manage to stay in touch and do business? One of the things that's important for us is that we do stay in touch with our business here while we're gone. So obviously everybody has cell phones, of which we use a lot, but we've also got what we call the Jetpack program through um, a local or Verizon actually is what it is, and it allows our printers and our laptops to be connected to it so that we can go online and get all of our emails. We can research different places that we might want to go either while we're driving down the road or while we're sitting someplace in the country itself. And what's nice about that is that we can turn them off if we want to and have the seclusion and the stars, but if we did want to get up the next morning and try to figure out what we were going to do next or needed to communicate with our business or other people, we can do that as well. Um, being a little older, we're not as smart at it as maybe some of the younger guys are, but we're getting pretty good at it. Let's join Bonnie as she gives us a tour of her current Airstream home and home away from home. So when we're here at Scapoos Bay kayaking, uh, we built this little deck and we can just back right in here, back our Airstream in here. And uh, it's real nice because the step is even with the deck and I have my little um, Buddha statues and all of my flowers that I still love to take care of. And um, it's nice and homey that way. And then if you come on into my little house, um, this is my little house right in here. And so Steve and I live in here. Uh, we're full timers. And we've uh, redone a few things. We took the old grandma fabric off of the valances and there's nothing wrong with grandmas, I am one, but I just didn't like the old fashioned kind of stuff that was going on. So we put leather and leather on all the valances. We used to own an art gallery, so we've put some of our art from our art gallery up here and had a new bedspread made. Um, that was a little nicer than the one that they had on there. So yeah, this is our this is our little crib, so to speak. And we love living in here, and it's very comfortable and homey. And we've simplified our lives by moving into an RV. When Bedford launched Aquachem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. I am the aftermarket manager. I run the aftermarket division for B&B Molders. We're an injection molding company. And I've been here two years now. I started off in a family business, um, spent 25 years there, worked my way up from 
the bottom right up to the very top. And then I realized I wasn't challenged enough and it was time to move on to something else. So I decided to spread my wings and, and go into a different part of the industry. And that's where I landed here at B&B Molders. I've been here for two years and the challenges have been great and it's been a really rewarding career here so far. So at B&B Molders, if you took your RV and you took a 360 on the outside of it, you would see a lot of B&B Molder products. Everywhere from you'd see your awning gutter spout, you'd see your water management system, you'd see your electrical cable hatches, you would then walk inside your RV, you would see some ceiling cool vents, you would see some floor registers. We really do have a touch in every aspect of your RV. One of the things that makes me very prideful of B&B Molders is the amount of women that we have working here. We outnumber the men. We're, we're kind of that unicorn in the industry that I would say we're, we're at least 80 to 20 percent. And you don't find that very often. And you also find diversity and inclusion here too. So all walks of life, race, color, creed, you name it, B&B employs it. So the, I would say we're the role model of what we're trying to create out there. When I started in this industry, it was incredible to walk onto a show floor and be one of the very few women that were there. Um, and through my journey, it's been incredible, the growth that we've had through the 25 years. Now you'll walk onto a show floor or into a company, you'll see much more women there. We're still not quite there yet. We're still about 20% below the national average. So we're still what they consider male dominated, but these things don't happen overnight. RVWA was from inception actually created the idea was from a man it may be very surprising but it really was this guy was very forward-thinking his name was Frank Hugelmeyer he was president of RVIA at the time and he's seen a need in this industry for a woman's alliance um, it had been tried before but the timing wasn't quite right so he came to a bunch of us and said you know you guys should do this so that's really how the idea was born. And then we just got a group of women together and we sat down at a RVDA function and said, okay, we wanna do this. What does it look like? What's the name? And let's get this rolling. The launch of RV Women's Alliance was actually in Salt Lake City um, two years ago and it was a great event. Um, we had a great turnout, it was wonderful, and we started doing a lot of um, networking events at trade shows and things like that. And then COVID hit, and then we couldn't network anymore. So we had to kind of take a step back and say, okay, besides just networking, what else can the RV Women's Alliance do for its members? And that's when we decided we're going to flip an RV and we called it Drab to Fab. And what that did is we brought members from around the country. We had over 80 volunteers so far from over 40 companies come and take this RV, strip it down, and is now rebuilding it. The RV Women's Alliance has over 1,200 members of over 400 companies nationwide, including Canada. That's very impressive considering we've only been around for two years, and it just goes to show you the need that this industry had for something like this. The future of the RV Women's Alliance is really bright because we have a lot of things coming down the pathway. And one of those is our industry specific jobs board called the RV Career Highway. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna be an RV specific jobs board where everybody in the RV industry can post jobs and also bring people from outside the RV industry looking to come into the industry. Because nobody wakes up one morning and say, oh, I want to work in the RV industry, right? But it's such an amazing place to work. And once you get here, you realize that and you never want to leave. So part of our job is to tell people why come here, why work here, why work in the RV industry. It's not just Elkhart, Indiana. It's the whole nation. There's dealerships, there's manufacturers, there's suppliers all across the country and Canada. The RV Women's Alliance has four pillars that we stand by. It's recruit, unite, inspire, and develop. We do not do anything if they do not fall within those four pillars. So some of the stuff that we wanna be working on is education. 
We have um, programs coming down. We have a new education committee, which is going to have two times a year right now of in-person or virtual learning opportunities. Every Friday we have something called the Coffee Lunch and Learn where you can sit in during your hour of lunch or we record it so you can listen to it later. It's about personal development. It's about honing some of your skills. The, the subjects are all over the place, but they're all available for our membership free of charge. And that's something that we, we are very passionate about is bringing the educational piece to our members. I've had the honor and privilege to work with people through the draft to fab project and through the RV Women's Alliance to work with women in all different sectors, everything from CEO, president, on down to the, the women that are on the shop floors, you know, putting walls up and wiring electrical on these RVs. And it's amazing the amount of talent and amount of different types of jobs that are available for every facet of any talent out there for women. So as you're making memories in your RV, I want you to stop and think about all the women that contributed to the memories you're making today. Everyone from the woman CEO to the woman line worker all had a part in it and I'm incredibly proud to be a part of an industry where we can make this happen. From off the road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Good morning. Lady asked me to show you this little space heater. This type of space heater is very popular with the hunting community. Uh, outdoors only. A lot of um, carbon monoxide poisoning uh, potential with this, but it's only outdoors. Does a wonderful job. Hooks up to a propane tank, 20 pounder, 30 pounder, 40 pounder. They're all universal right here. This will come in a single burner, two burner, or triple burner on a manifold. The single burner simply connects to the internal thread on the bottle. The multiple burners, they'll actually clamp to the lip of the tank and then there will be a hose that would connect. Uh, they're incredibly um, efficient, throws a lot of heat. BT rating, not quite sure on these. Um, but typically um, at the 100,000 BTU consumption is one gallon an hour on your propane. So the hookup is uh, quite simple. If anybody's ever hooked up to uh, propane or a, um, acetylene tanks, uh, a flammable material, you know the thread is typically a left-hand thread. Finger tight is always good. All right, and we are ready to fire it up. So, you have a uh, control knob here for uh, different levels, different settings. Zero, um, white on this particular unit is off, and then you can go one, two, and three. So we're going to go to the maximum. For the ignition, some, some systems will have a, a little red button. It's called the PZO button. Creates a little spark, the igniter. Um, but this one does not have it. This is a very basic um, system, so you got to use a, uh, you got to light it. So you turn your bottle on, and then you do have a, a button you do need to uh, hold on. Depress, you can hear it. You can hear the gas coming out. When you hear that, hold the button down, side hole, and it's on. And you got to hold the red button in for a few seconds 
and it'll stay on. And it's starting to radiate some nice heat. Then to turn it off, you simply just turn the gas off, the bottle off. Don't forget, you get this control here, you can go back off with it. And give it a few minutes to cool off. Now, transporting this unit, when you're not using it and you're transporting it, they are bulky, a bulky item that can be easily crushed. There's not a lot of structure. They can easily be crushed, damaged. Um, sensitive parts down in here, safety, if it gets tipped over, the safety device will shut the gas off. Um, so there's some safety features built in that you need to protect. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, switching going on here. Um, so it's good to have a good sturdy cardboard box with a padding around it for transporting. Always just have that with the unit. That's part of the unit. A storage container for protection and transportation. Um, so one, outdoor use only. Two, transport it, um, protect it. it. It can be easily damaged, but if you take care of it, it's got some, a lot of good heat, quick heat. So that could be very important. This little burner here, I'm guessing, and I might be wrong, is probably a 15, 16,000 BTU per hour. So you could get five, six hours on a gallon of propane with a unit like this. Want more RVing today? Then visit rvingtoday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in rvingtoday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Welcome to Rollin' On TV's Paws On Board. I'm Dr. Fitz, and this is Champ. If you have a special dog that you have traveled with for years, it may be time to take some extra precautions on your trip. Older dogs can have a more difficult time traveling, but when done right, they can have just as much fun as they used to. A main consideration for older dogs traveling in an RV is the stairs. Many older dogs suffer from arthritis or weak back legs and may have difficulty on the narrow steps. Prepare for this by bringing along a ramp or investing in wider steps for your RV. Some pet-friendly RVs like this one may come standard with wide steps to make getting in and out easier for everyone. The flooring in the RV may also play a role in your pet's comfort. Vinyl type flooring can be helpful for easy cleanup of pet messes, but may be too slippery for arthritic pets. You could opt for a carpet interior or consider small rugs placed where your pet spends the most time. Some owners have also found rubber boots or even little grippy socks um, to be helpful for their pet to have more grip on the floor. If your pet has been diagnosed with arthritis, consider bringing along pain medication for the trip. Your dog may want to run and play like normal, even if his body can't always keep up. Pain medication can be helpful to keep your friend comfortable and happy after a long day of walking or swimming. If your pet is already on pain medication, make sure to bring this along with you or get a refill prior to traveling. Finally, bring along items to help keep your pet cool, such as a towel, extra water, and even a portable fan. Make sure that the AC in your RV is working prior to your trip as well. Older pets may have difficulty cooling themselves off as compared to younger dogs. Overall, keep in mind that your pet is older and may not be able to do as much as he used to. The long hikes and days at the beach might be replaced with slow walks and nap time at the campground. Either way, take your friend along for the ride and enjoy having paws on board. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz. This is Champ. Thanks for watching Paws on Board.
You can watch the full uncut version of many of these stories along with other additional videos, stories, and news on our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production.